welcome to my vegan family kitchen. I'm Brigitte, it rhymes with beet, and I'm delighted to welcome you in here. I will tell you a little bit about myself, and then we're going to dive right in because I've got very ambitious plans today to cook a bunch of things, but also introduce you to all the wonderful types of tofu out there. You may have heard already that it's probably my favorite food, and I'm really excited to share more about tofu with you so you can enjoy it more. And I cannot believe how popular this workshop was in terms of registration. Not often do I have that many people sign up for a workshop, um, but clearly tofu strikes a chord. Everybody is a little mystified by it. If you're new to this way of cooking, or even if you've been around for a long time, maybe you've experimented with it. And I want to empower you to make tofu a part of your everyday meals at home. You don't have to eat it every day, but if you want, you can. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes as well. So just a few things about me. I'm very passionate, as you can tell, about helping more people eat more plants because it's better for us. It's better for the planet. It allows us to show up our best in the world. And it's just a fantastic way of eating. I'm an educator and a researcher by training. You can read more about that on my website if you really want to, but I have a PhD in sociology of science. That's my background. But I have been in the world of teaching cooking for almost 10 years now. And I have been cooking exclusively plant-based for 10 years. And I've been uh, vegan, fully vegan for about nine years now, nine and a half years since my second child was born. Uh, you can listen about that on my YouTube channel if you want. And I also have a couple of certificates in plant-based nutrition, one from the University of Winchester in the UK and one from the University of Guelph in Canada. When I started cooking this way, for me, it was for environmental reasons and then for ethical reasons. And at the beginning, I thought the health claims were probably a bit inflated by all the vegans because they wanted to convince everybody that it was a good way to eat. And it turns out, now that I've looked much more deeply into it, that there's actually very solid health reasons to eat not any vegan diet, but to eat a whole foods plant-based diet as much as possible. So you will learn all about that if you hang out in my kitchen more often. Uh, vegan Family Kitchen is my tiny little business. I'm a one woman show and I offer a meal planning service that you can subscribe to if you want someone else to decide what's for dinner. There is a version for families and a version for singles and couples. It's all included in the subscription. I offer some online programs as well. And right now I'm super excited to be recording Plan, Prep and Relax with a fabulous group of 10 people that are helping me through the recording phase of the course. And the course will launch for the public in general in January. So check that out. It's about cascade cooking, which means doing some batch cooking on the weekend and then using those building blocks instead of being focused on having seven different recipes to do your dinners for the week. So stay tuned. That's coming in January. Uh, I've written this lovely little book called Flow in the Kitchen that you can read. It's a lot about my philosophy, my approach to cooking, about mindset, and then about improvising based on the basic forms of the main dishes of standard Western uh, vegan cooking. Healthy vegan cooking, of course. And I've mentioned Cooking Club before we started recording. That is near and dear to my heart. Best thing for you to do, come to Cooking Club every other Sunday. Look for the link um, in the description below if you're watching the replay or go to veganfamilykitchen.com slash cooking dash club and cook with me on the weekend. It's life changing. So enough about me. Let's talk about tofu. Tofu, my personal favorite food. And I say that as someone who is a former cheese lover. You can hear my accent. I come from a French background. I used to love cheese. Now I find it a little bit off-putting. Um, but back then, I loved cheese a lot. And my favorite thing to eat before I became vegan was blue cheese on top of rare, you know, blue steak. So I really come from a background as a meat and cheese lover. And if I can go fully vegan, trust me, everybody can do this. And not only I've done it, but I really enjoy it. I want to start this workshop by clarifying what I think is a big misunderstanding and shifting mindsets around tofu. And once you do that mindset shift, I think it's much easier to unlock the benefits and the joy of cooking tofu. Many people 
when they start cooking vegetarian or vegan food, think of tofu as a meat replacement. That is not the case. Tofu is its own thing. It's its own food that has been around for a couple of millennia that was invented a very long time ago. And I find it much more generative and useful to think of it as a cheese replacement or as an egg, egg white replacement. I love tofu for what it is, and it can take, of course, any flavor, but the best part of it, and I'm going to show you a little later, is the contrast it brings between the white texture that's, yes, a little bland, and the explosion of flavor that is on the outside of the tofu. And when you combine those two, it brings extra contrast to the dish, and that contrast contributes to the satisfaction, to the feeling of satiety, and to the sensation of flavor that we get in our mouth. So something to keep in mind, don't think of tofu as a meat replacement. Think of it as a cheese or as a um, egg replacement. And the most popular cheeses, dairy cheeses, like think of fresh mozzarella, the cheeses that go on pizza, for example, they don't have a strong, specific flavor. Yes, there are cheeses like the French uh, Gruyère des Grottes, you know, cave-aged Gruyère. And, well, Parmesan is not even vegetarian, but Parmesan has a specific flavor and blue cheeses have a flavor. But the most popular cheeses don't have a specific flavor. The reason we like them is because they have a specific mouthfeel and they amplify the flavors of everything else that they are served with. And so when you think of tofu that way, I think it leads to a much better experience. So tofu, I need to give you a little bit of background on how it's made, but it's basically fresh cheese that is not made from soybeans, that is made from, that, that is not made from dairy, but it's made from soybeans. And you can, by the way, age it. If you stick until the very end, I'm going to open this jar and probably this one too, of fermented tofu, which is kind of like the blue cheese of tofu. Uh, I'm going to have these at the very end, but there's practically nobody doing this sort of stuff in North America. So these are imports from China. Uh, so stick until the end if you want to see that. And but in general, tofu is made in the same way as cheese. That means, so here I have some soybeans. You can see I'm going to show you. They're very sweet little round bearings almost. And they are soaked first or cooked directly. It depends on the manufacturing. There's lots of different ways and not every tofu is the same, but this is roughly the technique. So you soak and then cook the soybeans and you filter them to make soy milk. So that's the first stage of tofu making. And once you have soy milk, and I don't have any homemade soy milk right now, it is put in a pot again and brought up to a boiling point again. And then a coagulating agent is added, a curdling agent. And it's the exact same thing that they do when they make mozzarella, for example, or any other dairy-based cheese. There's two, there's more than two, but the two main coagulating agents are calcium sulfate, or gypsum. So this is basically a white powder. I'm not going to open it because it's going to make a mess. And the other one is nigari, also known as magnesium chloride, which comes from the ocean, but it's basically um, a chemical, um, the naturally occurring chemical. And these two, used together or separately, have the effect of causing the soy milk to coagulate. And I think you could probably use these to make dairy cheese as well. Not totally sure, but there's a chance. Um, and so it causes the soy milk to form curds. And then the curds are filtered through a mold. And this is an example. So you may remember during the pandemic, if you've been eating tofu for a while, that there were uh, food food supply chain issues, and it was really hard to find tofu because all the people were buying the tofu, and I was thinking they were not even eating it. So I decided to try making my own tofu at the time. It's a really good experience, but let's just say that it takes a long time to do all the steps I've described. But So you cover one of these molds here with uh, cheesecloth, as the name indicates, and 
you ladle the curds from the soy milk that are forming into this here and you add a little weight on top it would sit like this and you let it be for multiple hours and the water drains out and you have yourself a block of tofu right and that is how tofu is made there's many many different kinds of tofu there's a lot of people that believe that tofu is tofu and once you've tasted one and you don't like it that's it but the truth is that the taste of tofu from one type to another from one brand to another will vary a lot and it will vary based on those types of coagulating agents that are used how much of them it will vary based on the taste of the soybeans not every soybean is the same so the soybeans have a different taste it will vary based on the temperature at which the milk and the tofu were were boiled also the density of the, the, the of the milk to begin with you know you can have cream and you can have milk well if you use one or the other it will lead to a different like a more dense soy milk will lead to a different kind of tofu compared to the other one there are also tofus that are not filtered, drained like this. Um, so instead of adding the coagulating agent and letting the curds form kind of the loaf of, of tofu, when you talk about silken tofu, they basically just add the coagulating agent to the, soy, the hot soy milk and it creates the tofu like that. And that is what we call silken tofu. So I'm going to show you some example here. My favorite kind of tofu, personally, is this. And these are all, mostly, most of them Canadian brands. But this is a firm tofu that happens to be organic. And I want to say, by the way, as far as I know, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm 98% sure, there are no genetically modified soybeans for human consumption. There's a lot of GMO soy, but it all goes to animals. And of all the soy that's cultivated on Earth, over 90% goes for animal consumption, and I think less than 5% goes for people. So definitely, you don't need to worry about that, but it's still interesting to have organic as opposed to not organic for various reasons. Um, you can make your own choice. I also love the non-organic version of this. But this firm tofu here has, for ingredients, water, soybeans, calcium sulfate as the main and the only coagulating agent. Whereas the same brand, Sunrise here, their extra firm tofu that looks like this, their coagulating agent number one is magnesium chloride or nigari. And they also add calcium sulfate because if you want it to be like super extra firm, you need to add more coagulating agent and even different types of coagulating agent to get the, the kind of taste that you want. Personally, I don't like the taste of the kind of tofu that is first and foremost magnesium set. I much prefer the calcium tofu. So if you're a neighbor and you're watching this, come and knock at my door at the end because I'm not going to eat it today. I'm, I'm not a big fan of magnesium chloride tofu. Um, except, well, see, this is another example here of a tofu that has, it is organic pressed tofu. So it's been pressed already to be quite firm and it has both calcium and magnesium, but calcium comes first. And the other benefit of this is that the calcium is of course really good for us, for bone health and for cardiac health. And if you're eating a plant-based diet, it's useful to think about those things. So choosing a calcium set tofu is great. But this one also has magnesium, which gives it a slightly different taste to that I personally quite like. Um, this is a tofu that I like to use in soups, also calcium and magnesium. It's called Northern Style, and it's a little softer. I like that. Um, silken tofu, there's multiple types. This is the best known in North America. You can find this in the United States as well, Mori Nu tofu and it is a silken tofu I'm going to use this today to make a sauce it is firm which means that it was probably made from a denser soy milk and it is set this one with mm, calcium chloride as well whereas this one here another kind of silken tofu is set with magnesium chloride and it tastes differently so very different experience. Or maybe I will use this one. I find it kind of neat. 
This one is also organic tofu. This is made in Vancouver and it has also calcium. So this one doesn't, yeah, calcium sulfate first and then magnesium chloride. So this is another kind. The benefit of this one is that the, the boxes are Tetra Pak. It is shelf stable. So if you have an earthquake kit or an emergency kit of some sort, you can throw in a few boxes of tofu like this. And actually this kind of silken tofu I find quite delicious with just a bit of soy sauce on it. It's a treat, simple treat to enjoy, perhaps with a little cilantro. Don't keep the cilantro in your emergency preparedness box, but good stuff. So I like this. I like to keep it in my fridge. There's also a ton of variations on tofu that you can buy. One of my personal favorites, and it's out of stock right now at my store, so I can't show you, is smoked tofu. And it's been pre-smoked, and that is what I use in salad. I just take it out of the package, slice it, add it to my salads. It is very yummy, a little bit extra salty. Quite good. These are puff. You can see pre-fried puff tofu. I use this in soups. Often, you know, those long noodle soups with some vegetables. Um, there's all sorts of flavored tofu. There's sprouted tofu. I could not find any last night. It's not personally my favorite. To make sprouted tofu, you just need to sprout the soybeans before making the soy milk. And finally, here's another delicacy you can find. This is, there we go, soy tofu pudding that is flavored with mango in this case. There's also almonds that I saw yesterday, but it comes in all sorts of flavor. I strongly recommend if you haven't seen this plethora of tofu types before to take a little bit of a trip tourism in your own town to any local Asian grocer. Some of them even make their own tofu. I find that every major city in North America has a tofu maker that is local to them and you can buy really fresh tofu. And that is something important to remember is that aside from fermented tofu, tofu doesn't keep. Tofu is not meant to be kept in your fridge for a month or two months, it will go bad because, and not only it will go bad, but even over the course of the two weeks that it stays in your fridge before you open the package, the taste will change and the texture will change a little bit. Personally, I prefer it when it's very fresh. And again, think of a cheese. If anybody is or has had poutine before, this traditional Quebec dish with French fries and gravy, and the kind of cheese that goes squeak when you bite into it, that is very fresh cheese and that nobody says that poutine cheese doesn't taste like anything or is not crispy enough, you know, it's, it's what it is. And in the same way, tofu is also a very fresh form of cheese. However, it is a lot more versatile and you can do so many more things with it. And we're going to get right into that. If anybody has questions, put them in the chat right now because I'm going to have a look as I get organized two and I'll just check my notes here. Um, a couple of things I haven't said, there's a lot of protein in tofu and there is a little bit of fat and that fat helps make everything else more flavorful. So fat molecules amplify the flavors of food of any type. The benefit of the fat that's in the soybeans is that there's absolutely zero cholesterol because cholesterol is made inside animals and tofu comes directly from plants. So strongly recommended from a nutritional profile perspective. If you have tofu with calcium, then it's a great source of calcium as well. And I mean, soybeans in general have calcium, but definitely calcium set tofu will have more calcium. And I won't get into these details today because it's a little bit complex, but I recommend you go on my website and I'm going to put the address of the article in the chat. But there's many more health benefits to eating soy foods. Um, let's see if I can do this here. There we go. There's a lot of benefits to eating soy foods. And I've got the article right here that you can go read for more details. And if you go to nutritionfacts.org and you search for the keyword soy, you're going to find a ton of information. So please do not be concerned about the health impact of eating tofu even every day. The only reason you should not eat tofu basically is if you're allergic or intolerant to soy. And that is one of the top eight allergens. So something to keep in mind, but definitely for the vast majority of people, not a concern. Let me look at the questions in the chat. 
Uh, what is the definition of silken tofu? I thought silken just described the thickness of the tofu. Good question. So um, the definition of silken tofu is that the way it's made is different. So the normal non-silken tofu is made by making the soy milk and then adding the curdling agent and filtering out the whey. So the whey is the watery part. So you keep only the curds and you remove whatever remaining water and you remove as much water as you want to get you between a medium tofu and an extra firm tofu. That's regular. Silken tofu is made, basically they have the soy milk, that's usually a, a thicker soy milk, inside the container and they add the coagulating agent and they put the lid on top. That's it. There is no filtering out of the whey when making a silken tofu. The texture is a lot more delicate because of that and um, they typically use more nigari. But there's also, as I just discovered, some types of silken tofu that have um, some calcium sulfate in them. But typically, it's, it's a more Japanese way of making tofu, and they use primarily nigari. I hope that answers the question. Um, and I do not have answers about whether the magnesium-calcium combo is healthier. Personally, I choose my type of tofu because I find it tastes better more than for the health benefits proper. I would say the emphasis on calcium is probably a good idea. People who eat a wholesome plant-based diet with a variety of ingredients typically don't have much of an issue, I think, hitting their magnesium targets, whereas calcium can be more challenging. On the topic of calcium, I recommend you watch my most recent or second most recent YouTube video, uh, youtube.com slash at Vegan Family Kitchen, or just look for me. And I go into quite a bit of detail discussing calcium. There's also a blog po post about calcium on my website. So check it out. Okay, are you ready to do a little bit of cooking? I sure am. And I have an ambitious plan here, which is to, oh, first, you want to know, everybody wanted to know, what about freezing tofu? What about pressing tofu? And what about boiling tofu? Okay, this is important, but I'm going to talk about that at the same time as I prepare for cooking. I'm going to tell you that I personally use this tofu here. So I've just, um, where did it go? Okay, so I told you my favorite is this firm tofu here um, that is calcium set. And I'm going to show, oh, am I there? Here's a bowl. Yeah, here's a bowl. Okay, so what I do, I do not press my tofu. And I think, I mean, I'm not Chinese, but I'm pretty sure that it is not a common thing in China to press your tofu after buying it. You basically buy the level of firmness of tofu that you want. If you want extra firm, you buy extra firm. If you want firm or medium, you buy one of those. And then you use that. And you can see I'm removing, I mean, a lot of water because it's packed in water, this one like this, I'm kind of just squeezing it with my thumbs. And then I'm going to take this package here and I'm going to take a towel. You could use paper towels, but I don't own paper towels. So I just wrap it in a towel. I'm not going to put a pile of cookbooks on top. I just do this and I have called it the day. The outside surface of my tofu is not dry, but it's certainly less wet than it was. And that is what allows it to become a little bit crispy or at the very least a little bit more firm when I'm going to cook it. That's all I do. I don't get into more complications than that. I'm just going to get rid of this because I'm needing this bowl. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is tofu four different ways for you. I'm going to do for bowls, because I will prepare to eat bowls later, I'm going to make baked tofu slices in the oven with a very simple marinade. And we'll talk about the marinade as I do that. Then I will also make air fryer tofu and I have a double air fryer here. And I'm going to show you the difference between tofu that's air fried with nothing at all and tofu that's air fried with a little bit of potato starch. You could use cornstarch, we'll talk about that also. 
I will make a tofu scramble over here and I will make a sauce that you can use on pasta. And I hope you don't want me to cook more than that because that's a lot of stuff to cook in 30 minutes, but I can do this, okay? And what I'm going to do is show you the difference. I hope I won't get them mixed up. So this package of tofu here was frozen overnight. So I just popped the whole package in the freezer last night and I took it out this morning and I hope it's pretty much fully thawed now so you can tell hardly at all. So this one here was the one that was frozen and it's it's got a bit of a bulge. So what happens working clean, you know, remove the detritus when you're working. So you can tell what happens when things go in the freezer is that the water forms icicles and the icicles break through the cell walls of the tofu cells, you know, of the, the soybean cells here. And in the process of doing that, it means that it makes it easier for the tofu to release its water. And that is why, and it, it kind of changes the form of the tofu. So let's see if I can cut a piece and see what it looks like on the inside. It also looks quite similar on the inside. I find the color to be altered a little bit as well. You can't tell that here. Okay, we can see, I think, from here. This one here was frozen, and it's got definitely a more porous structure to it, whereas this one is softer. So this one, you, I rub my thumb on it, it's a little bumpy. So this one is going to absorb the marinade a little bit more deeply, whereas this one here will still have more water on the inside and not absorb the marinade so much. Try not to mix them up. Um, what I'm going to do is show you my really super basic dipped baked tofu. And what I use is, this is soy sauce. I refill those at my um, refill store. So I'm sorry, there's no specific brand, but this is about a quarter cup of soy sauce, about a quarter cup of balsamic vinegar. And again, this is refill, don't worry about the brand. You could use a reduced balsamic vinegar, you know, balsamic glaze. That would work too, it would be a little sweeter. And this here is blackstrap molasses, which is a powerhouse of really cool nutrition. So yes, you could use maple syrup. And I use just about, not quite a tablespoon in here. In the vegan family kitchen, things do not get measured very often. It's really nice to learn how to eyeball recipes. And this also tells you that it's not a big deal. There's plant-based quick cooking is so forgiving. If you're trying to cook fish and get the right level of doneness, one minute can make or break your dish. Steak, a steak will no longer be quite the same if you cook it an extra minute or two. Tofu, very, very, friendly for the cook and accommodating to your schedule. Of course, if you leave it half an hour more, things might start happening, but plant-based cooking is very forgiving. So I'm just mixing things together because the molasses is quite thick and I'm going to make slices, dip them in and put them on this baking sheet here. I'm not going to make it done because eventually somebody has to eat all that. So. I'm going to start with the non-frozen tofu. I'll get a pen. Here's my trusty pen. And I'll put an F to make sure not to mix them up. There's um, a vegan blogger, or a vegan YouTuber who's made a really cool video where he shows having tested thoroughly the different modes of preparation of tofu and pressing it for a day and pressing it for half an hour and marinating it in advance and not in advance. And the bottom line is that nobody could tell the difference. So I strongly encourage you to not waste your time marinating your tofu because it doesn't make a difference. So for baked tofu slices, so this is going to go in bowls. I like mine to be on the drier side. Okay, I'm putting this here, I don't wanna get mixed up. This one is not frozen. And I'm going to make these slices into squares. 
I like it to be on the drier side. So I'm going to just dip my slices in my marinade here. And so the outside will have a bit of a glaze. I've got four slices here. Two, three. So this does not need to take long. I've got eight slices total. By the way, very important knowledge, you can totally eat tofu raw. It's already cooked, so it's not really raw. And there you go. Okay, so I'm going to put this in here. And not only you can, but you should. You should taste the tofu before you do anything to it. So I eat this tofu all the time, but I'm just going to show you that it's true and I'm not going to die. Just taking a piece here. If you like fresh cheese, you just might like fresh tofu. It's a very reasonable snack. Toddlers love fresh tofu that hasn't been marinated or done anything to. And when you taste it this way, you get a much better feel of what it actually tastes like compared to a different kind of tofu that is set with different curdling agents. So I've got my non-frozen one here. I'm going to do the same thing with the frozen. Yeah, there's still a bit of ice at the bottom. I'll make slices that don't have ice. So one, two, three, four, and I'll cut from the other side to avoid the chunk of ice. If I had taken it out last night, um, it would have been fully thawed. So again, I'm just going to dip these. And so these are going to absorb more of my marinade. But we'll see when it comes out of the oven how different they look or not. So you can tell already that it's the marinade goes deeper. I, I'll try to show you. Hold on. I'll do four more. Okay, and then if you have marinade left, sometimes I just pour it on top, but depending on the dinner, if I'm making a stir fry or something like that, I might keep the marinade and just add a few more ingredients to make it into a dressing. One, okay, let me show you this. Okay, so you can tell the difference. I hope it's going to be visible. So the one in this hand has only been dipped and not frozen. This one was frozen. And you can tell that the marinade seems to be going a little bit deeper in there. So I'm putting this in the oven. The temperature of the oven is 375. And this happens to be a convection oven. And how long should this go in for? What about 375 uh, for 20 minutes? Hey, Google, set a 20-minute timer called baked tofu. Thank you, Google. Google is really nice for that. And by the way, if you have one of those smart friends in your kitchen, you can um, run multiple timers at once and give the timers names, which is really a big benefit. Okay, so I've got my previously frozen tofu here. This one is not previously frozen. And I think, yeah, that's the right thing. Okay, so baked tofu on the way. What do I do next? Air fried tofu. Okay, so you can learn. I'm going to use for the air fried tofu, um, the tofu that was not previously frozen because I really want that contrast between the moist, white interior and the slightly crispy outside. And so I'm using, not this one here. So this tofu here, I cut a little bit earlier and I wrapped it just in this towel. And I'm not going to make not too big blocks so that it cooks a little bit faster. So when you're putting things in the air fryer and this, you know what, I'll do it in the skillet too. Let's try this. Hmm. Okay, so when you cook tofu in the air fryer, it's nice that the outside is a little bit dry so that you can have that crispy exterior. I'm going to use this block here first, and this one will be the one without the cornstarch. I should start the air fryer. It doesn't really need to be 
preheated, but it's kind of nice. So I'm going to cut this into kind of smaller cubes. And this is something I do at home a couple of times a week. Exactly what I just showed you. Open the package, pat it dry if I have time. Sometimes I don't. And I just cube it like this and put it in. That's it. My kids love this. I find it makes a great topping on bowls and salads, on top of noodles, whatever you want to do. And this is how I use it when I make um, stir fries. So I prefer to have the tofu cooked on the side first for the stir fry. And then I add it at the end and mixing it with all the vegetables and the sauce. So it allows me to go a little bit faster. If you don't have an air fryer, I will show you in a moment how I do it in the skillet. So now I've got other cubes. These are a tiny little bit smaller, but I don't think it will make a big difference from a scientific experiment standpoint. So I've got a bowl here with tofu cubes in it, and I'm going to add potato starch just to show you the difference. That's something I do once in a blue moon, um, kind of for extra fun to have the extra texture. And I'm putting, that's probably one and a half tablespoon or so. That's going to be enough considering I have a very small amount of tofu. The proportions are not important. So why potato starch? This is the more traditional starch used in Japanese cooking. And when they, when they fry tofu, it is a little bit finer than cornstarch, but not as fine as uh, tapioca starch. Tapioca starch gets really gummy and slippery. If you drop that stuff on your floor of your kitchen, watch out. Um, it's not favorable. So all I've done here is coat my cubes with the starch. So if I if my tofu was really wet, it would make a gummy outer that would be a little bit gross, but because the tofu was mostly dry, and again, I did not press it. It's just tofu that was padded dry like this. Um, it makes cubes like this. Those look like a little bit like uh, Turkish delights, if you've had those, but definitely not Turkish delights. And so I'm going to pop them in the air fryer. And my air fryer is not crowded, which is quite important to getting good results. The air fryer is crowded. Sometimes if I'm in a rush, I put too much in. And I almost always regret it. Okay. So that's fingers. And you may have noticed I did not use any kind of oil there. I don't think it's necessary. If you're used to eating food that has oil in it, if you eat takeout often, you're going to miss the oil. That's a habit. I think, but when cooking in an air fryer that has those non-stick sides, I really don't think it's necessary to use oil. Uh, but again, it's a habit. And if you've eaten agedashi tofu in restaurants, it's not air fried, it's deep fried. It is a delicacy. I call it the tofu gateway, um, but clearly it's, it's a lot of fun to eat. And so there's 16 minutes on my timer there. I'm just going to let it run its course. I'll shake it a couple of times midway through and the temperature is 390, you know, the basic air fryer setting. Let me see if there's anything in the chat. Yes, the temperature of the air fryer, 390. Um, yes. Uh, oh, I'm sorry that I triggered somebody else's Google. That's kind of funny. Um, yeah, soy sauce, balsamic, blackstrap molasses. You could use maple syrup. But I use the molasses because it's so much more nutritious. And I like that it's thick. I think it sticks a little bit more to the tofu. Not 100% sure, but pretty sure. I don't often do comparison tests. Done a whole lot of time for that in my kitchen. Um, okay, and how long can it be frozen? I'm not sure I understand that question, Sheila. Uh, let me know. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a wet air fryer. Oh, this is a... Ninja with the two baskets. I'm not sure. I bought it at Costco. Um, I quite like it. Uh, it. It's run of the mill. As far as I know, I resisted getting an air fryer. I have to be honest here for many, many, many years. And I just acquired this 
in February, before I got this, I even got a convection oven thinking, oh, it's just like an air fryer. And you know what? It is not like an air fryer. And I really appreciate the air fryer now. I use it to make tofu and potatoes. That's almost the only things that go in there. Aside also from uh, cauliflower wings, you know, dipped cauliflower that goes in there. That's the only way my son actually finds cauliflower appealing. So why not? And um, it was a nice purchase. I'm glad I have it. it. It's giant though. And I'm glad there's the two baskets because it allows me to do different things. And mushrooms also and jackfruit go in there sometimes. Keep looking for my jackfruit video. It's coming up eventually. Whew. Okay, so the other way to make tofu is in the skillet. So if you don't have an air fryer, or even if you have an air fryer, but you have some time, it's not that it takes a long time, but I really like, so if I'm doing a stir fry, okay, wait, let's backtrack. And you need to know, welcome to the vegan family kitchen, that around here, there's only three recipes that matter. Maybe you fort. The fourth one being how to cook whole grains and whole grains can be cooked like pasta, all of them until they're al dente, you can tell by tasting them. So that's recipe number one. Recipe number two is how to make soup or stews. Once you know how to make soup, you don't need a soup recipe anymore. You need to open your fridge and look at what's in there and then you can make soup. Recipe number three is how to do a stir fry. So that's pretty useful to know and Recipe number four is how to make a bowl or a salad. A salad is the same ingredients as a bowl, but tossed together. Once you have that idea in your head of those standards way of assembling a dish, you don't need recipes anymore. And that's something that I go into quite a bit of detail in my book, Flow in the Kitchen. So if you haven't read it yet, please have a look because it will completely change how you approach cooking. So the stir fry means cooking at high temperature, kind of quick, right? And if you're going to do that, the protein aspect of your dish, it's useful to cook it first. And so I'm going to use my skillet over there. I have a skillet here, um, but I need it for the scramble. So I'm not going to use that one. And this is pretty low investment. I'm just going to put these cubes of tofu. I'm going to add a teaspoon of oil. You don't have to. It depends on the uh, two teaspoons. There we go. It depends on, and this is just canola oil, which is not a danger. Don't worry about canola oil if you're worried about it. I'm just going to stretch it using the silicone brush to the whole surface because my uh, seasoning of my cast iron hasn't been great. Okay, so I'm just putting the tofu cubes in there. And once in a while, I'm going to bring Mr. Happy here, my favorite flat edge spatula, to shake up the tofu a little bit. And so if making a stir fry, cooking the protein first or separately, for example, in this case, I'm air frying or putting them on the in the skillet first and then removing it and cooking the vegetables. Another way to add a protein to a stir fry would be to use edamame. Edamame is soybeans, you can buy them frozen. And so preparing the edamame on the side would be another way to do this. I'm just going to give this a shake. There we go. I'm going to show you right away, the one with the cornstarch, with the potato starch needs to cook a little longer, but my son likes his tofu like this. So this is really simple and plain. Um, the inside is still very white. The outside is starting to get a little golden. It's very hot. And it can be as simple as this. Again, if you don't think of this as a meat replacement, if you think of it as a meat replacement, you're like, oh, that's not meat. It's not very good. But it's not a meat replacement. So let's have a look at the one that's in the oven. Okay, so you can see here, so this is the non-frozen non tofu. 
You can see the inside is very white. And the outside is coloring up. I'm going to put it back because I like it to be a little drier, but some people like it like this. This one was frozen. And I'm going to show you, you can tell the difference in the texture of it. It's a I personally like the fine texture of tofu, but here you can see there's incursion of the marinade on the inside. And you can flip it. Fingers are a perfectly fine tool, but it gets hot, so watch out. But yeah, I like my baked tofu slices to be a little more dry. Forgot to flip this one. So this one is clearly more wet. I wanted to mention boiling the tofu as well. Oh, there we go. So you can see this side is clearly not cooked at all, so it needs to dry up a bit. Oh. Okay, how are these guys doing? This is what uh, batch cooking with me on the weekend looks like. Always having a lot of stuff on the go. Oops, okay. I'm just trying to get that to get a little bit golden all around. Um, what's next? Tofu scramble. Am I forgetting something? Um, the size of the cubes for the air fried tofu and the skillet tofu, the same or similar? Yeah, totally. Um, it really does not matter a whole lot. Yes, boiling tofu, thank you. And that was you, Vivette, who asked that question. So when I first read that message, I was like, boiling tofu? What the heck is that idea? Um, but it is a thing that some people do, and it is somewhat similar to um, freezing. And I personally have brined tofu when making mapo tofu, for example, but I've never boiled it before. What the boiling process does is basically do that same breaking. You know, when I told you the ice crystals break the cell walls of the soy, and in the same way, the, the boiling breaks down the, the structure of the cells of the soybeans. And it does create that same absorbability a little bit. This being said, in many cases, you can just have the tofu in not so much the marinade because the marinade won't get in if it's in the fridge. Really, it doesn't make a huge difference. But if you're making something like uh, mapo tofu, which is a little bit more advanced. So in the chili mushroom sauce, the original is made with pork, but don't do that uh, because pigs are very close to people. So don't, don't, don't do that. Um, but if you're doing the vegan version of mapo tofu with mushrooms and the chili sauce and you let the tofu marinade in like simmer with the sauce for quite a while. And then the tofu takes on a lot of the flavors. It's the same thing as the boiling, I suppose. So you could do that. Um, in my case, I brine it before I make mapo tofu. That's another way to do it. But if you're not in a rush, you let the dish simmer for longer. I did not mention this, but you can also make tofu, um, uh, to like instead of chicken noodle soup, you can make tofu noodle soup. And many people, think they have to cube tofu, but you don't. You can rip tofu into pieces like this and pop those in your soup. You could air fry them previously if you want, and they're going to have a bit more of an outer crust that will be a little bit more reminiscent perhaps of chicken. I'm not sure you can do that, but you don't need to cook tofu in only one way. There's lots of options. Let me just check into these guys. Yes. Okay, so they're starting to get golden on each side. Oops. I'm going to give it another three or four minutes here. Let's have a look into these guys. Okay, so this here is good enough for me. So this is even a little bit overcooked for me. So this is the air fried tofu without and there's there's a remnants of my roasted red peppers in there the brown comes from the roasted red peppers not from the tofu so it has a crust on the outside but on the inside it still has that contrasting white very delicate inside so i'm not going to put it in my mouth because it's super hot and let's look at these guys and you know what i've Mistakes happen. 
I put way too much cornstarch. Um, let's get a bowl and show you. And this is an example of learning as you go. Yeah, I'm not super happy with this because there's too much cornstarch, uh, potato starch. Um, so it's more like what the starch does is that it brings, so see, it's, it's white. I should have used probably about half that, the amount here, but you can see the inside and there's clearly more of an outer crust. And the reason for that is that the starch dries the outside of the tofu and it's not unpleasant to eat. No, it's a little dusty. So shouldn't have done that. Do what I say, not what I do. Mm. But yeah, you can tell how there's really a little separate layer on the outside. And that's the very dry tofu because the, the starch has pulled the moisture out and the inside still has the moisture and a really nice, delicate contrast. I'm still going to have that on my lunch. I think it's delicious. Now, these guys, if I was cooking this for myself for dinner and tending it with more attention, I would toss the cubes until they're cooked on every side, but I'm just wanting to show you. So you can see the caramelized brown outside here. When you see brown in the kitchen, it means sugar, right? So sugar is good, adds flavor. And so these have a little bit of it crispy outside, not super crispy, but again, that contrast. My personal opinion is that this is a better way to do it than to have fully cooked. Mm, I love tofu. Fully cooked through tofu. You have to appreciate the contrast. I'm just going to move this over here and mm, bake tofu one more minute on the timer. Okay, let's hop on to make a stir for the scramble. Let me share my screen. So again, you're going to want to adjust probably so you can see me and the inside of the skillet. I hope it's not too hot. So this is my aunt, my great aunt's cast iron skillet. And it's its first time showing up here. So I hope it behaves well. I only cook in cast iron. It's my favorite way to do it. In a tofu scramble, you can read all the details where are my tofu scramble instructions? Here they are. Oh, there's two more things. Goodness gracious. Okay, we'll be okay. So tofu scramble, the idea is to cook some vegetables. I'm going to start with onion here. I add a pinch of salt and the salt does the same thing. So I was mentioning brining earlier, boiling and brining. So the salt does the same thing as the brining, which is breaking down the cell walls and making them sweat. Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit faster on this than normally. Stop. Thank you, Google. I'm going to add... Yeah, thank you, Google. Okay, I'm going to add red peppers. This is going to be a little bit of a... And carrot, it's going to be a little bit of a southwest kind of tofu scramble. If you haven't seen my green food guide, you can email me after the workshop and I'm going to send you a copy. But it's a reminder that half your plate, roughly by volume, should be vegetables. A quarter of your plate should be beans or bean products such as tofu. A quarter of your plate should be whole grains. Most of the time, I don't get crazy about whole grains all the time and sprinkle with nuts, use seasonings, and that will give you a balanced, healthy vegan meal. I'm going to let those cook for just a moment and take out the tofu from the oven. There we go. Um, it doesn't look drastically different, but now it's more even between the two sides. And you can see this one was not previously frozen and this one was frozen. And you can tell it also lost its moisture a lot faster. In the oven, it dried out faster because that molecular structure was broken down by 
the cooking. And I'm going to bring two pieces so you can see the two pieces in my main camera. Oh, hot. And look at the inside. So the one that was previously frozen is more like a jerky, almost. And this one, although it's a little thicker also, but definitely the inside is still moist and has a lovely texture. The other one is drier. They're both interesting. Personally, I prefer the non-frozen version. Okay, still on the scramble, adding some mushrooms. When you make a tofu scramble, choose three vegetables. Here I got a little crazy. I've got a fort, but choose three vegetables of different colors. Make sure one of them is green. And I like the acronym from Dr. Furman, the G-bombs. So greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds. So include all of those things in your food every day and you're going to be doing great. So I'm just adding here, this is actually a regular that I had in my fringe. I needed a green and I'm adding a little bit of garlic. And then I'll make the sauce for you while this is still cooking. Just quickly chopping, mincing the garlic. It doesn't need to be perfect because I don't work in a Michelin starred restaurant. I work in the vegan family kitchen and I want to encourage you to do things not perfectly. Okay, so garlic added. There should always be garlic and everything. I could use more, but we're in a bit of a rush here. So cooking the veggies until they lose a lot of water. All these mushrooms, I'll probably add another pinch of salt because the mushrooms need to sweat. If the mushrooms don't lose their water, it's not gonna be great. No, I'm not using water to saute. I don't think that's uh, necessary because I have that pinch of salt that helps the water come out of the vegetables and it prevents them from sticking. I'm also not cooking at super high temperature. It's hard to tell here. Um, this cast iron skillet is kind of hot, um, but I'm at the two out of five. I was at a one and a half previously. This is pretty hot. You can hear, I mean, you guys can't hear, but when you're cooking, keep your ears open and you can hear the water sizzling as it touches the bottom of the skillet. When things go quiet is when it's time to add more to your skillet, right? Um, what else are we going to add to this scramble? I'm going to add, I've got garlic already, a mix of spices. So in here I have black salt. If you haven't had black salt before, it's kind of specific to making anything that you want to be eggy when it involves tofu. It gives a little bit of a sulfuric smell to things, which reminds of eggs. There's turmeric for the yellow color, but also for the health benefits, smoked paprika, cumin, oregano. You can't see it's at the bottom. I have a uh, fresh ground pepper and smoked paprika. I said, oh, I also added a little bit of chili powder. I have this ancho powder that I like, and I'm just going to mix these up a little bit to make sure I'm going to add that to my skillet. And is there something else? No, I don't think so. And then I'll add the tofu. So I'm going to be using medium tofu because I like when I used to eat eggs, I liked my eggs to be runny. If you liked your eggs to be super dry and firm, then I recommend you use firmer, extra firm tofu to make your scramble. But this is gonna be my lunch and I'm making this for me. So I'm going to make it to my personal preference. And just for kick, I'm going to be using this um, calcium, set, calcium and magnesium salt silken tofu but you could use a medium tofu instead. Um, there's so many different options. Whoa. So not many tofus come with these uh, funny packages here. Yours is probably going to be just in a box and that's fine. You don't have to use silken for a tofu scramble. That's just my personal preference. And you can see here, it looks kind of like mayo. I know people use tofu to make mayo as well. It's nice to have big, chunks. I don't want it to be like completely broken up. I know also um, 
another option here would be to put the tofu along with maybe a little bit of soy milk in the blender and with similar seasonings. And then you can make more like an omelette where you could pour the tofu mixture into the skillet and make it cook it like you would an omelette or a crepe, you know, and that would work as well. So notice here, I have a very thin metal spatula that I like here because I'm lifting the tofu, scraping the bottom. I don't want to break it up completely. Again, that's because I like my eggs runny. And I'm going to let it come to temperature. So you can tell now it's taking a little bit of a yellow color. Voila. Okay, so I'm going to let it lose some of its water. I'm going to even increase the temperature a wee little bit. And at the end, I hope I don't forget, but at the end, I will deglaze. This would be best because it's a Southwest kind of flavor profile. It would be best with lime juice. But as I said at the beginning, I don't have lime juice, so I'm using mandarin juice because I had mandarin oranges and that's what I'm going to be using today. But I'm going to let this come to temperature. And that's, you know, for me, this is a perfect tofu scramble. I like this texture, but if you prefer, again, a, a firmer scramble, I would use firm tofu and you just break it down with your hands like I was doing earlier with this one here. You just kind of squish it and it falls into pieces like this to cook it. Okay, so while this is happening, we're gonna do one last thing, which is the sauce. Mm. No, we're gonna have a snack because this is so good. Okay, so last thing I want to show you was making a very simple tofu sauce. And if you have like me a power blender, whether it's a Vitamix or a Blendtec, you can use regular medium tofu like this here. If you have just a hand blender or um, a lesser, less powerful kind of blender, you would probably be better off using a kind of silken tofu, like that one that comes in the Tetra Pak container. Or again, if you have a Chinese grocer in your area. And I'm not even really going to bother. I'm just patting it a tiny bit dry here. So that's my block of medium tofu. I'm not using firm. I don't want to see the curds, but this medium tofu, which is calcium set, has hardly noticeable curds. I'm going to use only about half the package because um, I'm making a small sauce. So I'm just putting this in the blender. Here. Oh yes, you'd like me to switch camera for the sauce. Okay. So let me, okay, I've just put this in the blender. I'm going to show you first the tofu's scrambles finalization here because for me it's perfect okay so deglazing okay so when you do anything in a skillet you can see the crust here at the bottom that's forming that's sugar you don't want that sugar to go away with the dishwater you want to get it in your tummy and that's what deglazing is all about i'm putting the juice here and the juice will boil and evaporate and allow me to scrape the bottom like so and to keep those sugars in my tummy. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to let this come hot, hot for another minute. So I'm going to move the camera away from that. And in a minute, it will be ready to eat for my lunch. Okay, so back to the sauce and this is our last step for today other than if you stay long enough you'll see me taste the fermented tofu the brand i haven't had before so we'll see before this session started i roasted some red peppers you can also buy red peppers in a jar watch out though because some of them are not like super sweet um you know what i'm actually going to taste to test the sweetness of these because sometimes red peppers can be a little bit bitter so I'm just ripping a little corner here. Whoops. Hmm. They're sweet enough. Maybe I would add a tiny bit of maple syrup to this. We'll see. 
So I'm just putting my roasted red peppers, there's three, in my blender here with the tofu. And I will put, I have garlic, two, I don't know. Let's put the whole thing, three cloves garlic. I love garlic. And a little bit of miso. Where's my miso? If you were going to do this a long time in advance, I would suggest using garlic powder instead so that the garlic doesn't ferment. But I'm using miso here. That's about a teaspoon and a half, two teaspoons for the saltiness. It's just white miso. Um, it's not what's in the container because the miso inside I made with my daughter when I went to Japan, uh, but it's just white miso. So you could use any white miso. It would do the trick. And I'm going to pop this on the Vitamix for one minute. Before I go though, I'm going to attend to this. Yeah, okay, this is good to go. I'm going to turn this off. Okay, so I'm just going to put this on the Vitamix. I wasn't thinking straight, that's okay. I should have used my other blender that I have a tamper for. I'm going to mix it up a little bit so that the peppers can get in there. And if it's still stuck, I will probably just add a little bit of soy milk to it. I'll give it another mix. You could, you know, I'm thinking increasingly that I should have done this with the hand blender. It would have been just as effective. Here we go. Or my bigger blender. Somebody help me, I need a tamper. Anybody has the tamper for this? I'll show you my hand blender in just a moment. Um, so this sauce is made with medium tofu. If you don't have a Vitamix, you would probably want to use a silken kind of tofu that's a little bit softer, like the one I had in the box. All right, finally. Thank you for your patience, everybody. Okay, yeah, I, I I could have used a wooden spoon for temper, but there's a time when I did that where uh, the wooden spoon touched the bottom blade and you don't want that to happen on live television. Okay, let me mix it for one last 10 seconds to catch the sides. Here we go. So let me show you the sauce here. I'll pour it into this container. You can see how delicious it is. So this is a perfect rosé sauce. And it's the sort of sauce you would use for, um, well, anything really, uh, but it's really good with um, stuffed pasta, or uh, penny is a classic penny with rosé sauce I quite like. And you could adjust the um, level of saltiness by adding more miso. And you know what, now I'm tasting it and it does not need the maple syrup. So I'm glad I did not put it in before. The roasted red peppers are balanced by the gentle, delicate taste of um, the tofu. So it's good. And after doing this, when it's dinner time, so for me, I'm going to transfer it to a jar, um, but when it's dinner time, where's my jar? Here we go. I will warm it up before serving it because it has the raw garlic in it. 
if this was made with powdered garlic, garlic powder, I would not be worried about it, but because it's made with raw garlic, I'm really going to want to cook this. Again, tofu itself can be eaten without additional cooking. It's not a concern. There's no salmonella, no E. coli, none of that in tofu. You don't need to worry about it. But um, the, the raw garlic would be a little bit much. And I'm going for tofu on tofu to dip this into this. And I would also probably want to add a little bit of extra, maybe a few drops of Tabasco sauce, same in the scramble for best results. And I'll show you the scramble here. It looks like this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have this with toast as my lunch. And that's usually the, the lunch I make on Saturdays. Saturday morning, I make my shopping lists. Often I will go to the farmer's market as well. But either Friday night or Saturday lunch is when I empty the fridge of all the fresh produce that I have. And so I like doing something like a scramble. There's always tofu in my fridge to capture whatever leftover veggies. It can be bok choy. It can be broccoli stems. I almost use broccoli stems today that I grate. You want to have a balance between the broccoli. It's a little bit bitter and some other vegetables. I always add an onion, always add garlic. You can change the flavor profile, but I find that something like a Southwest profile is best. And so those are all the things you can make with tofu that are very basic and introductory. This is not a fancy tofu cooking class. I wanted you to have a good feel for what tofu is, what it can be like, how you can use it in kind of basic settings. And if you remember only one thing from today is that tofu wants to be loved for being tofu, just like we all want to be loved for being ourselves. And what tofu is, is a wonderful white, delicate, curded product made from soy milk. And you can enjoy the contrast that the tofu brings. Yes, it's interesting to have that crispy outside that you can use to create more contrast. And the contrast is what makes the dishes interesting. The contrast is what increases satiety. Having you know a bowl of all the same does not increase satiety, but seeing that difference between the inside and the outside is what I think is tastier. So I encourage you to do that and try it at home and focus on simple dishes and start experimenting from there. And then if you wanna get into making something that looks like salmon from tofu, be my guest. If you want to add tofu to homemade seitan, go ahead and do it. But having first this mastery of the like very basic things you can do with Tofu will make your life a lot better. So I would like to ask you, please. So after this, I'm going to taste the fermented tofu. But I would like to ask you, please, to make sure to fill the feedback form that you will have just received by email and um, say hello and let me know what you think, if you have questions or if you have suggestions for future workshops. And now we'll look at the comment. I can see things are moving over there. Um, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Carol. Whoops. Okay, this is a touch screen, but not with dirty fingers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Roasted garlic. Yes, that would be delicious. Um, yes, roast. So freezing tofu, does this sauce freeze well? Not great. I find that everything that's made with tofu, if you freeze it, the results are not spectacular. So I don't personally recommend freezing it. If you did, you would have to put it back in the blender to bring it back to the proper consistency. So... I wouldn't do that. Um, go buy tofu, yes. So if anybody wants to unmute themselves, go ahead. And I'm going to open up. Okay, I'm not going to open both. So you guys have to kind of decide for me. Actually, I know what I'm going to do. So this one, Wang Ziha, is the cl most classic of fermented tofu. This one has a slightly different taste and less popular, so I'm going to open this one up. But um, yeah, now I'm going to stop recording. And um, thank you for coming. <laughs>